Your aim should just be that we want to make better use of this today than we did yesterday. Having a growth mindset means that actually just always learning a little bit is the goal. Hello, I'm Angelica Bell. Welcome to the show. Now, whether you're an aspiring startup, a savvy small business or leading an established enterprise, we'll aim to bring you inspiring stories and fresh knowledge to help you grow with confidence. Join me as I talk to inspiring entrepreneurs and leaders, finding out how they've overcome obstacles and grabbed opportunities to grow a thriving business. You can also catch Holly Mackay and Ashita Cabra-Davies on our extra show as they talk about trending issues faced by businesses everywhere. Now, in today's episode, I'm talking to Dr. Anne-Marie Imaphidon, MBE, the founder of STEMETS, an award-winning social initiative that is helping young women to enter the science, technology, engineering and math sectors. She's also created the world's first business accelerator for teenage girls, an app and a new social media platform called the STEMETS Society. We'll be talking about the future of business tech. Amory, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Angelica. Not at all. It's good to meet you properly. Yeah. We yeah, have yeah, met yeah. before. We have. And I've known about the amazing things you've done and how I mean, you it's just incredible that you, you. you know, got your DC early, you you know, all these sorts of things. When you were younger, did you know you had superpowers? <laughs> That's why I have the grey hair now. This is the, <laughs> this is the full extension <laughs> of my storm status. Um, no, I, I mean, I still don't think they're superpowers per se. I think it's something when I was younger, it's still something I'm I'm aware of that if you tell me something and it makes sense, I'll get it and you don't need to repeat it over and over again. So yeah. I think that was probably the kind of the initial thing that I spotted in school where in primary school, you know, they teach you something in year two and then again it comes around in year three and it comes around again in year four. And I remember being like, well, we already covered that this fraction is equivalent to that. Like, well, why why do we need to say it again? Mm -hmm. And of course, people need repetition to be able to learn things. So I was aware that I needed slightly less repetition. But I think it's still something I hold to this day that I was really fortunate to have opportunities that I was able to take advantage of. And then that's how you know, the GCSEs early, the tropology, all of that kind of stuff came about. And that a lot of people, given the same opportunities, would have the same results. Um, and this is something we still see now with Stemets, where, you know, I did GCSEs that are meant for 16-year-olds at 10. I did A-levels meant for 18-year-olds at 11. We have groups, cohorts of young women and young non-binary people as well as part of those cohorts doing like Python, which is a programming languages mm -hmm. um, certifications, again, meant for adults. They're doing that age 13, 14, 15. They're learning agile principles, which is another thing within technology. They're doing cyber certifications in their teens. And these are, you know, not dumbed down. They're not Stemets versions of these qualifications. These are real things that, you know, th that trainer is also training adults on the same syllabus on any other day. So I don't think I had a superpower. I think my superpower, if anything, was access to opportunities and making the most of them when they came across so we are going to start by you having a bit of a challenge we're going to do this with everyone okay you've got 60 seconds mm -hmm. to tell us about your business story your entrepreneurial journey <laughs> for people who don't know much about you I'm not going to be strict with timing thank you I appreciate it where's the challenge then if you're not being strict with timing I'm going to be strict with timing <laughs> I took myself into that one <laughs> did I <laughs> oops <laughs> right time starts now I, my business journey, I've always known I wanted to do something that was impactful, something that was large. Um, and being a student forever means that you maybe don't have as much money as you'd like to just live life and do what you'd like. So I started a series of businesses all around networking and events. I actually ran a web consultancy at one point as well um, and then ended up starting Stemets in parallel with another one of my business ideas, but kind of didn't see it as a business because it's more impact and social enterprise. Um, but it stuck. And so we'll be celebrating 10 years next year with a team of about 20 odd um, and seven figures turnover. That's about 40 seconds. Really? It was quite, I think that was under a minute. Because I cut a whole load of stuff out. You told me you were going to be, you know, strict with time. So. You're being humble. Yeah. Because there's so much, <laughs> we can fill out the gaps. 
Now, Marie, where can future technology help get more young people into these industries? So I think part one is the fact that future technology, by nature, by its name, is not here yet, right? And so you're, you've got the opportunity to almost get in on the ground floor ahead of folks or alongside folks where there's not many other spheres of life that you're not coming in and working alongside someone who's like, I've been doing this since before you were born, right? <laughs> and you kind of immediately feel inferior, whereas it's like no one's been doing really the metaverse in its current state and we kind of haven't decided what it is anyway, right? So you can't all say you've been doing it since before we were born because none of you can agree on what the metaverse even is. So I think there's elements of that that you have with an NFT or with Web3 or any of these other kind of bits where... You know, whatever you say now can still be instrumental, can still have influence, can still set the norms in a lot of these spaces. And so there's a really big opportunity there. I think the other side of the opportunity is also the and this is an assumed thing. If we buy into this whole concept of the digital native, that actually as a young person coming into this, the learning curve is a lot shallower for you than it is for someone else who may have worked on something else technically beforehand or someone who maybe doesn't see technology as their thing so if you're someone you know, we say it all the time right my two-year-old was on the ipad and you know they got onto youtube and they managed to cancel the call that was coming in and you know and it's like yeah the the learning curve is a lot shorter the younger that you are and so actually for you to engage, for you to be a part of these conversations, for you to be instrumental, again, it's a lot easier. You're coming with that advantage if we buy into this concept of the digital na native, of course. Understood. So if you were to start a business today, where would you look for technology opportunities to create better businesses for the consumer? So I've got to be honest, if I was going to start a business today, my answer to that question is always something to do with cyber. Well, we need security. I always, I always drop everything. Any new thing that's coming up needs to be secured. Yes. The same way as any new planet we go to needs to be secured. Any new environment you go into needs to be secured. And, and that's, so, what, that's what scares me about technology a little bit. Because whenever something new happens, I think that, is, that someone knows more than me. Yeah. There's, there's another platform that's yeah. in control. And so who's watching? And what are the rules there? And, you know, what's the... Um, vulnerabilities right yes. in me being in that platform and being in that space and so cyber is one of this uh, you know that's the point of cyber it's almost like the let's lock this down let's make sure it's secured and the rest of it so that if if you ended this the question there that's what my answer would have been however you didn't right you said for better opportunities for consumers yeah. and i think this is one where when we look at our trend towards personalization so whether it's big data or any of that kind of stuff i think that's it you know consumer experience when you buy something or when you engage with a particular service you want something personalized you want something that recognizes who you are and acts accordingly right and whether it's dietary requirements and being able to step into that restaurant and not be shown the things that are gonna you know kill you or cause you an allergic reaction or whether it's other things to do with you know even something like hair you know when I walk into a hairdresser's I want to be able to know that I'm going to get the right kind of experience based on, I don't know, my hair type, my hair journey, you know, what, what I'm like, the fact that I only have grey hair, for example, right? <laughs> and so I think using, leveraging technology to be able to give people that personalised experience, I think is always the number one thing to be able to, to lean into. So within that technological world, that cyber world, you can still hone into something that you might have an interest in. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, exactly. There's so much opportunity. And I think it's one of those things as well where technology is just a tool. And so a lot of the technologies that we see was someone else needing a particular tool for something that was like top of mind or important for them. And when we think of the, all the different types of human beings that we have on this earth at the moment, with all the different types of problems, all the different types of priorities, there's quite a lot actually within you that you're like, actually, no one's thought of that tool that helps with that particular thing. And so why can't I, you know, build a service? Why can't I do a bit of research into the metaverse and think who's running hairdressers in the metaverse? Maybe that's a problem that, that can be solved. Or who is using NFTs or using, I don't know, the blockchain to track and see the providence maybe of, uh, of some food or a piece of clothing. And so this is the thing, like there's so many problems to be solved. We've got the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which were the follow on because we didn't, we didn't complete the UN Millennium Development Goals. And so if you don't know what problems there are, go and have a look. We've got like a global list of problems we're trying to solve. And so tap into the technology and where that can help with some of the solutions to some of those problems. Well, Anne-Marie, I want to discuss the current situation with you at the moment. From your point of view, which other industries are most impacted by the disruptive technologies? 
you know, we talked about the metaverse, for example. You know, what do you think? So there's lot, lots of industries. In fact, some would say most industries are being disrupted quite a lot by future technologies. And I think it's not a question of if, it's just when as well with some of them. And there's a kind of the famous, famous quote, um, the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. And I think this is something we have across a lot of different spaces. So whether it's across the legal industry where being able to recognise characters and pass information means that there are particular law firms that are setting algorithms to go back and look through historic um, property cases and use that to kind of inform what they do now on, on present cases or whether we're seeing it in medicine that there's all kinds of different things that actually you know when we think about it medicine there's still a lot to learn like there's still a lot that we need to know about the human body and so when we think of the different technologies that we have in terms of understanding parts of the human body in terms of diagnosing conditions that maybe haven't had as much funding or attention as they should have had or, or, or you know as they uh, as they could have had um, before now we're seeing technology now again going in and helping with that with surgeries with diagnosis with treatments like there's all kinds of different things so I think you know, there's, whether it's education, right? And again, you know, we've got technology that's looking, some of it sometimes sounds a bit creepy, you know, you know, some of it is kind of very high surveillance. Not all of it is, but, you know, there's there's all kinds of industries that we have that are being transformed by technology. And I think the most disruption is going to be where there are things that are repeatable and where there are things that don't involve collaboration and don't involve connection, because those are the things that human beings can do, right? That connecting with someone else is something that you know in a computer could, at the moment could, couldn't quite replace that in a classroom setting for example right whereas you know we already don't talk to our utilities companies right it's all in a chat bot it's all in an online system We'd, you don't need a connection with the people that serve you your water right and so actually why wouldn't technology disrupt that and so that's where we're seeing uh, the edits that's where we're seeing disruption that's where we're seeing the future kind of uh, advancing on us which is impacting Loads of different things, you know, jobs. Everything. Uh, communication. Everything. Do you think the businesses in these sectors are adapting well to it? Not entirely and not on the whole. No, I don't think they're adapting. I think it's a really interesting one because it's, I, I, none of us really lived through the last industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was a while ago. Yeah. And yeah, so, but, you know, it was around the corner. This is the thing. And, I, and so I think it's a little bit, actually, what we saw with the pandemic, where there was a bit of a, no, 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 this won't be that, you know, because none of us were here 100 years ago when the last one was, right? And so initially there were a couple of months of, yeah, yeah, we'll be back by, we'll be back in a couple of, of weeks, we'll be back in a couple of months. And so I think we've got the same thing with the Industrial Revolution, where it's like, yeah, 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 the technology will come, but actually... You know, I can still work the way I was working. I'm still going to be in the office every day. I'm still going to do this manually, even though it's quite repetitive. And so I think there's quite a lot of reticence to kind of take it seriously. There's still that kind of this newfangled, you know, view. And yeah, yeah, it'll never catch on. Remember, that was a thing. People would be like, yeah, the Internet's a fad. It will never catch on. And so I think we still have elements of that. I think the other thing, though, is, is and it's rightly so, is a little bit of a fear, actually, of, of the unknown and fear of the changes. And I think that's another big barrier we have for businesses being able to take advantage of all these things is, you know, what if I be if I do become over reliant on that piece of technology and it then fails or, you know, it doesn't evolve at the right pace or, you know, how do I know which one is going to be the best? How do I know which one is going to give me the competitive advantage? How do I know the one which one is going to actually be future proofed and not going to be one that I'm going to have to update it every two weeks? Because at the moment, that's how our technology is, right? Yeah. Every app is updated every two weeks. So there's quite a lot of things that are getting in the way of businesses being able to take advantage of this technology and be driving and riding the disruption rather than be uh, victims of this disruption. Well, let's look at the changing digital landscape. How can it affect businesses like Stemets? And how can it affect how entrepreneurs learn and grow their businesses? So for Stemets in particular, given that we are all around um, engaging, informing and connecting these girls, young women, young non-binary people with STEM and with STEAM, I think for us there's lots of things that the march of technology is impacting. So one is what we're talking about. I mean, we're talking about folks taking up roles and taking up jobs and understanding a lot of these things. And so if it's changing, they need to understand those. They need to understand the roles that they could have and all the rest of that. I think the other thing for us is also it's been, uh, it's going to impact, it continues to change and evolve the way we do what we do. So for example, I mentioned the Agile certifications earlier on. Uh, last half term, we, we ran an Agile certification academy. So we had about 10 young women uh, and young non-binary people from across the country, you know, doing this and learning together. And they were doing it in hybrid. 
So some of them were in the room, some of them were at distance, and they were all learning together towards the same certification in the same experience. And again, if we weren't embracing technology, I mean, part of it we were forced to do because of the pandemic, but we switched very quickly because we were very technically savvy in what we were doing. But being able to do that um, means that we can evolve our offering. We can reach many more young people. We can have maybe a higher quality experience for them if you know they've got a cold, they've got COVID, or yeah. if they're unable to travel and all the rest of it. So I think for us, that's been um, really cool. But I think I think the other thing is for for businesses in general is you know it's just another set of tools. And so actually, you know, have a look at, like, don't be afraid to just understand what is this NFT thing? What is this metaverse thing? What is this blockchain thing? And if you go behind the headlines, there'll be so many use cases. There'll so many, there'll be so many things that you're doing in your business as part of the way that you work that actually having blockchain to help track something because it moves across a particular system or through a particular chain Maybe that's something that will help actually with efficiencies, help with the happiness of your of your employees and your staff, help with the quality of experience you're able to give to your customers. But you'll never know if you're not having a look, if you're not understanding, if you're not experimenting with these things and taking the time to learn and to play and make mistakes. And it's not because everything you, le- you learn and you read about will be perfect for you, but it's because it's the serendipity of, yeah, you know, I, I, it wasn't until I tried that accounting software <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that I realised I could just click and do the tax return. Do you think the last couple of years has almost benefited businesses in a way that they've had to just rapidly get on top of these sort of things, these new technologies, new systems, be like, if I'm going to survive, yeah, I've got to get on this. Um, I think it's it's benefited them. I don't know if they'll see it that way. <laughs> I think we're still having this in the will they, won't they return to the office where it's like, well, no. The business, a lot of businesses kept going remotely. You know, there are a lot of businesses for whom your staff were still able to work. They were still able to contribute. You were still able to meet or have some kind of quarterly revenue. And so actually, if they're able to do that at distance, then how do you lean into that going forward rather than this rush almost to know I need to be able to see you at your desk and you need to be here all the time and no, no more Zooms and no more Teams and it must be all, you know, organic. And I think... You know, there's there's a lot of that that we kind of want to be able to reflect and be like, actually, we wouldn't have done this if not for the pandemic. But now that we have, what are the good bits of it? What are the bits we want to continue on with and we want to evolve rather than returning? Like, let's look forward, not look back. We're trying to embrace a we're trying to embrace new technologies when you're trying to grow a business or mm-hmm. even start a business can be very daunting. What guidance would you give to non-tech businesses who may feel out of their depth in this new world? So th- quite a few things I'd say. I mean, one would be have a growth mindset about this. And I and I say this to all kinds of people on their technology journey. I'm writing a book at the moment called She's in Control. And it's the same thing, like slowly, slowly catchy monkey. Like take your time <laughs> with this. Your aim is not to be the most technology savvy company ever that has ever existed that are experts at this but your aim should just be that we want to make better use of this today than we did yesterday this week than we did last week this month than we did last month and so having a growth mindset means that actually just always learning a little bit is the goal so if there's something small that you've gained something more small that you've tried then that's perfect that's fine and it brings down the expectations a lot more for you to know kind of that you're growing I think the second thing is to be iterative there are things that you have as lower priority that don't need to be sorted this time there are things that you actually just couldn't get that done within that time and so you build you measure how it went you learn from that and then you go back and you build again and I think having that approach as a technologist is important I think the third space third thing is to give yourself space to to do the learning um and I talk about learning tribes quite a lot that's why we have things like the Stemet Society these young people are learning together about all kinds of things. I, I think I saw a message this morning from one of them who is autistic and is like, how do I balance this? How do other folks kind of deal with this? And they're learning together. And I think, you know, when you learn together, you go further, but you need to give yourself space to be like, I'm going to spend half an hour a week listening to this podcast to understand, you know, X, Y, and Z, or reading this particular magazine or taking a look through the, the blogs that they have already. But you need to give yourself the space to do that and to experiment in the metaverse with NFT, whatever it would be. And so I think that's all the things to do as a as an entrepreneur, as a small business, as a person alive in 2022 and beyond. Actually, this is not going anywhere. Like this year it's metaverse. Next year it will be synthetic biology. The year after it will be heart print record. There'll be some there's always something around the corner. Now, you are a fantastic role model for 
everyone, not just budding female tech professionals and entrepreneurs. So what tips would you give our listeners to help them use social platforms and technology to grow their businesses? Because we know social media is so influential. It is. It is so influential. And and social media as one of those big options as well for marketing and all the rest of it is really, really powerful. So I think my first thing is to have a play, have a look, have a listen, have a read, go exploring. And with social media in particular, until you've sent that tweet, until you've posted that TikTok, until you've, you know, taken that amazing selfie, right? You deleted the other ones that were wrong. We deleted those. We deleted the the bad ones. Until you post it, you don't know what the response is going to be like. You don't know what's going to come from it. And so actually doing... Having a play, doing a series of tests that you get, again, build, measure, learn and kind of come back to is the way to get started, is the way to get going. And until nothing ventured, nothing gained. So until you send those tweets, until you write those think pieces, until you share those things on LinkedIn or whatever it might be, until you share. This was a great podcast I listened to of Amri and Angelica and here's what (laughs) I learned. Right. And tag me and tag you until you do that. You're not going to get back a like from us or a thanks for listening or anything like that. And so I think it's really important to play, to have a play. I think the second thing is you can do it for your business, but also have a play as a human being. Like there are a lot of things that actually it might not be in your current role or with your current business that that's a skill that you then or that's a tool or that's a framework or, you know, that's an option that you then end up exploring. I had this with a lot of my early businesses. There's so many things that we do at Stemets now that I explored when I was running the networking events or when I was doing the web agency that now it will come up and it'll be like, oh my goodness, how did I know that? And I'll be like, yeah, when I was running the web agency, sometimes that would happen to that person's website. And so actually, and I tinkered with that and I played with that. And now for Stemets, that's definitely what we need on our website. And that's definitely what I'm going to get the team to work on. And so I think being able to play as a human being means that then as well, you've got almost like a lower stakes place to play, maybe lower, then maybe higher, different stakes, place to play, to learn those skills to then come back and apply for your business. And those kinds of things are really deep set, deep rooted and um, end up being fundamentals then for the way that you run your business and the culture that you create in whatever your startup is going to be. Well, from all your work with STEMETs, are there any particular resources you recommend or business and technology in the future? As a trustee at the Institute for the Future of Work, um, I, I almost have to say, and I'm not only just because I have to, but because it's true, um, we've got a great knowledge hub on our website of all the kind of considerations, because there's lots of things to think about for business and for the world of work and this fourth industrial revolution that we're going through at the moment. So what regulation should look like, what good should look like, what policy should look like, how we might apply a lot of these technologies in the right place. So that's one number one resource I'd say to look at. But I think beyond that, I don't know if there's any one in particular one I'd point to. Um, I mean, obviously this podcast, you know, I'm, I'm on it. I've heard some of the other guests that are on it. So there's lots of nuggets that will be sprinkled here. And uh, podcasts are a lot of people's things, but they're also not a lot of people's things. And so I think it's really important to know where you learn. Like, are you reading? Are you listening? Are you watching? Are you whatever the other option is? You, you know, you know you better than I do. Um, and so look for where the business and tech is and overlaps in there. So is it a newsletter? Is it a particular feed you want to follow in your socials? Is it on Pinterest? I'm on Pinterest all the time, you know, getting brainstorming ideas, even how to use social media. There's all these pin- people that put those pins up. Right. And so I think it's just know where you learn, know where you get those things and make sure you make it a habit. Give yourself the time and the space, like I said, to learn and to play. Um, but other than that, there's no particular resource, resource, I'd say, because also everyone's business is different and technology is constantly changing and A lot of these things, we still don't have the full answer. Like, what is the metaverse? There's still not one answer. Can you imagine? We've been banging on about it. The mind boggles. Facebook even changed their name to meta. And we're still not really clear on what we're talking about when we say the metaverse. Um, so yeah, learn, learn, yeah, learn no, where you I, learn. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to go into the metaverse co- conversation because we, because it's a, it's a minefield. <laughs> <laughs> but look, learn learn where you learn search what you can search take, i think that's a good right point kind of you're, what you're saying is for businesses especially with technology to so take time out to learn what technologies are out there that are specific for your business to help it grow because you're right not every every technological advancement is going to be right for you exactly and i think it's one of those things as well where it's it's learn as many of the technologies as you can like you just want to know more than you than you knew yesterday right i was having this conversation in the office just before um, i came to record this where you know we're using a load of tools so when the team was like i want to learn how to use these tools and she was like i'm just going to go through tutorials and i'm like okay cool you could do that but also you could try and just apply it to some of the things you know we're working on some of the things you know you're trying to solve go and solve that problem and take the tutorial as you're stepping through and you're solving it because otherwise how are you going to know if it's useful 
just because it was useful for them doesn't mean it's useful for you just because it wasn't useful for the other business doesn't mean it won't be useful for you and so I think we all need to it's the serendipity like just try just have a look you never know like nfts might be the new ways that you release your lipsticks and that could be a thing that you're like actually the ethos I'm approaching this lipstick with means that nfts really does make sense for how I'm wanting to do this and it doesn't matter what the hype is, what other people have said, like you've got your real use case that really links to what you're trying to do as a business. And no one can take that away from you because you've spent the time learning about that thing. But I don't know if we were going to spend 40 minutes talking about NFTs, whether we'd have ever got to lipstick and NFTs if we were going to talk about it. And so you have to go on that journey yourself. You have to have a look and have explore and and play with these things. Just play. It's all fun and games. Enjoy it. Exactly. Anne-Marie, thank you so much for today. You're welcome. I'm, I've opened my mind Amazing. to technology. Thumbs up. Anyway, next week, join Holly and Ashita on our extra show as they discuss whether the metaverse will work. Will other disruptive technologies overshadow it? And how can you take advantage of them? And if this episode has inspired you, head to our website to find out more insights and potential solutions that could help you take action today. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs>